Hey gardeners! So today I'm going to be talking all about Indonesian blue tongue skinks and how you should set up their enclosures. Now when it comes to keeping blue tongue skinks, Indonesians in particular, Indonesians are not as common in the pet trade as the Australian northern blue tongue skinks. It seems the most information you can find relates back to how to care for the northern blue tongue skinks which come from Australia and have a very low humidity level and the care requirements are just completely different for care for a northern rather than an Indonesian. So the very first thing to do if you own any type of skink is to make sure you know what subspecies you have. There are many different kinds that come from Indonesia and Australia. The Indonesians consist of the classic Indonesian, the Halmahera, the Irian Jaya, Key Island, Merauke, and Tanimbar. All of these Indonesian blue tongue skinks require at least a 60 to 80% humidity level, which is very, very critical for their health. A lot of the time I see people owning Indonesian blue tongue skinks and they think that they are an Australian Northern and they keep them on Aspen, which just is really bad for them. It's not gonna reach those humidity requirements that they need in order to be healthy and thrive in captivity. So today I'm gonna show you guys how I set up Chancho's enclosure. He is my classic Indonesian blue tongue skink and I'm just gonna cover everything with you guys today and hopefully you'll have a better understanding of how to care for Indonesian blue tongue skink and how to set up an enclosure for one. If you are still unsure of what type of skink that you have, I actually have another video that I made completely on this subject which separates every single subspecies and lets you know characteristics and picture references of every single one of them to make sure you know exactly which one you have. So I will put the link in my description if that's something that you still need help with and then this video will just proceed with talking about how to set up an Indonesian blue tongue skink enclosure. So to start off, I'm just going to talk about the size of the enclosure. So for any blue tongue skink, this is the one thing that is generally going to be the same no matter what. Blue tongue skinks always get to be around the same size. So the best enclosure, the minimum for a blue tongue skink should be a four by two by one enclosure. They do not need a lot of height, but they do need a lot of floor space. If you have a baby blue tongue skink, you can not keep it in a smaller enclosure temporarily and upgrade it in time. The more space, the better for these guys because they absolutely love having space and they roam around their entire enclosure. Right now, I'm not sure what size I have Chancho in. His is not very tall whatsoever, but it does have a lot of floor space. He's still growing right now, but once he gets bigger, I will be upgrading him into a four by two by one enclosure for him just to make sure he has extra space because he already utilizes all of the space in his enclosure as it is now, and he still has a lot of space left over. So the next thing that I wanna talk about for Indonesian blue tongue skinks is the substrate. This is the most important thing when it comes to Indonesians, and this is the one mistake that I always see when people own Indonesian blue tongue skinks. They always assume that they have an Australian and they put them on Aspen. There is no way to achieve a high humidity level of 60 to 80% with Aspen. Some people say they use it and then they mist on top of it. You should never mist on top of Aspen because it will mold and cause bacteria and it's just gonna be a whole mess for your skink. You don't wanna do that. So some of the best substrates to use for an Indonesian blue tongue skink is gonna be anything that's basically cocoa husk. There are many different options that you can use. The one that I use is actually the Josh's Frogs Bio Bedding. I use this because it's really great and it sustains springtails and isopods very well in order to make it a bioactive enclosure. This means that the bugs basically work as a cleanup crew to clean up the extra poop within the enclosure and just keep the environment a little bit more clean. And it also retains humidity very well, which is perfect for Indonesian blue tongue skinks. Something else that I do want to mention while you're gonna be using a cocoa husk substrate, some people don't realize that when you're using a dirt substrate that it should be moist and you should be soaking it in water before putting it in the enclosure. You also don't want it to be overly wet. You don't want to squeeze it and have water dripping out of the substrate because then it's just way too wet and it's way too much for them. So what you want is basically to have a very clumpy substrate of dirt that's nice and moist and will retain that humidity for the Indonesian blue tongue skink. You can add springtails and isopods and make it bioactive or not. That's just totally up to you and your choice of what you want to do. 
I find that it works really well in my enclosure to use a bioactive substrate and use the springtails and isopods, but if you don't want to use those, that's totally up to you and you can do whatever you want. Some people can do combinations using some wood chips like the Reptibark. I tried using Reptibark in the past because it would be great for humidity also. However, it did not work out well for me in the end because it ended up becoming a breeding ground for wood mites. So I had wood mites all over my enclosure, all over Chancho, and it was just a huge mess. Um, the wood mites can basically grow and lay eggs on anything that's overly moist when there's wood in there. So I completely got rid of the Repti Bark, and because he does need such a moist substrate, I just used the Cocoa Husk Josh's Frogs Bio Bedding for now. It works perfectly for him, keeps that humidity up, and the cleanup crew also does their job, which I really appreciate. Along with substrate, I think that it would be great to add moss. You can use sphagnum moss. I actually use forest floor moss. And again, this is a type of moss that you're gonna be soaking in water before you put it in your enclosure. These skinks absolutely love to burrow. So not only having a thick layer of substrate, but then putting this moss on top, it just gives them so much opportunity to burrow into that substrate and it's so great for them. And again, it's just gonna boost that humidity to a whole new level that they really need. So the next thing I wanna cover is plants. So you can add live plants to your enclosure. I choose to not use live plants in Chancho's enclosure only because he is such a burrower and he basically just goes around his entire enclosure all of the time and his plants would not stand a chance with him. I mean, he would just dig them up and he would make a mess. So I honestly just haven't bothered with live plants because I just know that he's just gonna completely ruin them and they are never gonna stand a chance with him. So what I do is I actually use fake plants. If you're gonna be using fake plants, it's best to use something that's more plasticky, not really fabric, because when you're using fabric, bacteria can grow on it, especially if it's a high humidity enclosure. You don't want there to be a lot of bacteria in there because then you have room for respiratory infections and other illnesses that you don't want. So definitely use plastic or reptile safe plants for your animal just to make sure that you aren't gonna have issues with that. And then you're also gonna to wanna to be cleaning those plants as well. If you do choose to use live plants, which is a great option, I love live plants. It's gonna boost the humidity as well. If your skink isn't gonna ruin it, then I say go for it. But um, if you are gonna be using plants, you wanna make sure that there are no pesticides on your plants and they are safe for your blue tongue skink. So make sure that you're looking up online. A great place to look for safe plants for animals that also ships is actually Josh's Frogs again. I love their website because they have a section that's literally plants for animals that are safe and pesticide free. You still wanna wash them just to be safe but um, that's a great place to look just to even see options. Even if you don't wanna buy from them, but you just wanna see plants that could be safe for your animal, it's a great place to check out. Something else that I add to my enclosure just for enrichment and more burrowing opportunities is cork bark. I love to find cork bark rounds and even just the flats just to set on top of all of the moss and substrate because it still functions as a great place to burrow and hide so that way your skink feels safe within the enclosure. It also is just something for them to climb on. Chancho comes out and basks on top of his cork bark every single day. He absolutely loves it. So it's definitely something that I would recommend adding to an Indonesian blue tongue skink enclosure because they can burrow under it and climb all over it. It adds enrichment for them and it's just so great. And I love the way that it looks too. It just gives the whole enclosure a way more naturalistic feel for your skink. Something else you want to keep in mind for your blue tongue skink is actually the water bowl. I would recommend getting a very large water bowl, at least something that your animal can completely submerge in. They do drink from water bowls. They also drink off of the plants. Um, I spray down my enclosure for Chancho every single day and he usually licks some of the water off of the plants, very similar to my geckos, but he will also drink from the water bowls. So you wanna make sure that there is a water bowl that has fresh water readily available for them to drink whenever they need it. The water bowl, you don't want it to be super deep because the, obviously they have tiny little legs and they are not great swimmers. So if you can find a really shallow dish that has a lot of space and it's very wide, something that they can submerge in, not only will it be a great place for them to even just soak in or just drink from, but it's also gonna boost that humidity level as well. So the next thing I want to cover is the lighting and heating aspects of keeping an Indonesian blue tongue skink. 
Um, so this can be a little bit controversial because a lot of people do keep blue tongue skinks in types of like racking systems and they use heat pads. I personally am not for heat pads for blue tongue skinks. I think that you should use heat lamps for these guys because they do come out during the day and they bask every single day. I realized it with my own skinks and my friend's skinks. It's just always something that they do. It's something that they do in the wild. I think that also giving them UVB is beneficial for them. If they're gonna be an animal that's out during the day basking, then they should absolutely have some UVB. That being said, you do wanna make sure that you're giving them a UVB that is not going to be too powerful for them and cause damage to their eyes or skin. So because of this, you do want to make sure that you are going to be using a tropical UVB bulb of 5.0. You don't wanna use the 10.0 desert whatsoever that's more for like a bearded dragon. You don't want to overdo it with these guys because UVB is not required for blue tongue skinks. However, a little bit can be beneficial, so I would recommend it. I would also recommend a heat bulb for basking. I would never recommend to use the red bulb because they can cause eye damage and they just are not very good for blue tongue skinks or any other reptiles in general. So what I use is actually just a 75 watt bulb for my blue tongue skink, works great. And he is literally out basking as if he is a bearded dragon every single day. So that's something I would never want to deprive him of. And I think that it would be great for other blue tongue skinks to have as well, because they do love to burrow and they usually burrow when they sleep at night. However, during the day, I find that most of the time he is just out and about and basking. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you my enclosure for Chancho and how I have it set up. Keep in mind that this is just the way that I'm doing it. There are many different ways to care for blue tongue skinks. You don't have to just do my way. I'm not using live plants. If you're choosing to use live plants, that's awesome. And that's so cool if your skink's not gonna ruin it completely. So kudos to you. But yeah, I'm not saying that this is like the only way that you can do it at all. Like there's so many different ways. I'm just showing this works for me and maybe it'll help someone out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.